and you're here on WrestleZone, and we're going to tell you all about what happened on Raw, what we thought of it. It is your WrestleZone Daily for the 27th of April, 2020. You can watch On Demand on YouTube and Facebook or listen to the podcast, WrestleZone Radio. Give us a thumbs up on all of them. All right, a lot of free stuff uh, dropping on the podcast feed, WrestleZone Radio, an exclusive with Mike Bennett. You may know him as Mike Canellis, recently released from WWE. Uh, get that as well. I'm Kevin Kelm. Joining me from the city where WrestleMania was supposed to be this year. That's right. Tampa Bay, Florida. Robert DeFelis, uh, yeah. you watched Money at Raw. I did. You're just dropping the horns on me. I did. And the rest friend to us all from at rest friends. You can see them on YouTube and all the socials. Iridian Fierro joining us once again. Iridian, you have taken you've taken the whole Russell Zone by storm here. And, and, and <laughs> yes, they love you. They love you, Iridian. Yeah. Oh, or as they guys. call I you, you the too. girl. They said, when is the girl going to be back? Please, guys, <laughs> don't do that again. Don't do that again. All right. So Money Ain't Raw is in the books. Overall, we'll we'll get a little bit deeper into it. Uh, pretty fair episode for three hours. Didn't think it was a uh, barn burning, but it did have some exciting moments. So if you're with us live, fire off your thoughts about what you thought of this week's Monday Night Raw. A couple of people joining us, some familiar faces there as well. Don't forget to share the link and your comments will pop up here on screen with us as we go through the show. Uh, what did we think of Raw? Some big takeaways. The show closing segment, Dream McIntyre. Uh, nearly getting the best of Seth Rollins once again. Drew showing up in a leather jacket, saying, "I'm cool. I don't. I'm not intimidated by you." And Seth Rollins taking himself very seriously because he believes now that he is a god and a cult leader. Uh, he wore a suit with his his singular leather glove, which I thought was a cool segment. And he tried to say that. Oh, you should just give me the title because you can't handle this. And uh, he built up this whole this whole dialogue, this diatribe that was very soft and very specific in the very quiet setting of the No Fans Performance Center. And then Drew said, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> I thought it was, it was, a, good, it was a great line. Uh, Robert, you know the new 2020 thing on television is to say the word shit. Uh, and, and he got the best out of his shit bit here. What did you think? Yeah, I'd, I guess the edict went down right around the time everybody closed down. Yeah, you can say shit on cable TV at night <laughs> and... They are getting their fill on wrestling of saying the word shit. I thought this segment was great. I imagine that a lot of people were enjoying the sight of suited up Seth Rollins looking very dapper, looking at Ridian. She agrees. She knows. Agreed. You know, Rollins, I think, has done a masterful job of turning a real life story of I was a fan favorite and they crapped on me because I won the belt. Mm -hmm. into i don't want this to happen to you drew it don't was a good point it was he was i mean if you're a diehard fan you've been watching for a long time not just a casual pops in here and there he made a great point of that and that the fans kind of made him into what he is right now was kind of what he alluded to uh, it did remind me of the best villains are the ones that don't think they're the villain they think they're the hero and they're still going in that direction but then he does a bunch of chicken shiz stuff. Uh, see, I didn't, I didn't wear out my shit there. Uh, and he was, they jump into a brawl. He bashes his head on the on the table when he starts to st try talking it, which I thought was cool because like there's no fans to react to these things. Kind of cut those things off and go for the action. And and I thought they did plenty of that on this week's Raw. And they're kind of adjusting. There's some patterns you're seeing them get into. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and I, I enjoyed it. And I thought there was something really fun there. Uh, in the sense of that Drew's kind of a guy who just cuts through the noise. Like, let's not get through this. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to sign this right away, and you're now you're going to say something stupid. I'm going to cut you off and tell you you're full of it, and I know I can beat you, and you're not taking this title from me. He came off looking like a strong champion, even though the, the segment kind of ended with him not being able to get a hold of Seth Rollins. But Buddy Murphy jumping in for him, hugging Seth, saying, I got your back. I'm going to beat up this guy, and then... Boom, he takes the claim more. I thought that was kind of a cool segment. It did I'm I care more about this title match than I did a week ago. What about you guys? Oh yeah, definitely. Those guys are so good on the mic. They sell it so well. When Drew grabbed Seth's face and like smashed it on the table, that was the highlight for me. I was like, Oh my god, he's dead. He's not recovering from that. I was so like shook, but it was it was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was uh, it was fantastic. Uh, Buddy Murphy, like all good fanatics just taking the dive for his messiah good stuff good stuff no more aop i guess they're on the shelf indefinitely but it was really good overall for a closing segment uh, a lot of people uh texting in their thoughts about what's going on with wwe tonight 
Nick Batson saying decent raw. We'll get to our one out of 10 ratings as we kind of burn through the high points of the show. Uh, we did have a big six man tag team match with Rey Mysterio, Alistair Black, and Apollo Crews taking on Selena Vega's heel faction once again of Austin Theory, Garza, and Andrade. Pretty strong match. And Apollo Crews got the pin. This would lead to a match later on in the night. They set this up backstage and kind of follow Apollo Crews feeling really good about winning. Andrade not feeling good about each other. Carly, Carly is in between both of them interviewing on backstage, and uh, Apollo uh, slapped Andrade as hard as I've heard someone slap someone on a WWE TV show in quite some time. This sets up a good match. The match of the night, Apollo Crews with the biggest performance of his career yet again, kind of topping the rhythm he's been on for the past few weeks. Uh, but they stopped the match when he went for a finishing move and his knee had been buckling the whole match and it buckled one time too many. An interesting finish to choose there already. And what do you think of this? Apollo Crews was featured quite a bit tonight. He was. I think he was definitely the star of Monday night. Um, from the beginning and the MVP, you know, VIP lounge, they set him up to be the underdog of everything. Um, MVP asked him like, okay, do you think you have what it takes? And throughout the night, he definitely showed that he has what it takes. That backstage segment with Andrade was great. And that match was definitely one of my favorites of the night. So I don't think he's going to win money in the bank. I think he might just end up feuding with Andrade and eventually uh, go for the U.S. championship. Yeah, because they kind of alluded to it later on in the night. They're interviewing him. His, his knee is all iced up. He has a spot in the money to make. Maybe that's off the table. We'll kind of find out next week. I like that they didn't give that all away. Because, yeah. I mean, they gave you plenty of Apollo tonight. And I was like, oh, like, yeah, let's kind of see what happens. Maybe next week the knee is good and he feels he can go. So, uh, so there's something to be said with that there. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And just treating Apollo as his fresh face hero who has great matches. Now they're going to have to give him more than that eventually. Right. Uh, but he's a guy that people have always thought, like, yeah, WWE is a ton of good people. They can do something with. And this is certainly a case where, you know, all those fans say, how come they're not doing anything with this? Today? How come they're not doing now? They're doing something with Apollo Cruz. Uh, you know, Robert, you and I on our Thursday episode, we were talking about how there was a lot of fans very upset with Vince McMahon on the investor call, completely out of character, not Mr. McMahon saying that, you know, television ratings for them and taking this dip because they're trying to uh, really feature more of the lower card stars, more of the mid card talent in top positions. Drew McIntyre is an example, uh, and Apollo Crews is an example, uh, and they and you know Seth Rollins really has taken a backseat to Drew as the top guy, even though he's in that program, he's not really wrestling. And <laughs> how many people can you have in the gym in the performance center under the current cir circumstances of COVID-19? Uh, what did you think of that? Apollo Crews is getting a spot here. Drew McIntyre is getting a spot. What do you think of him trying to raise the bar with a lot of new talent? I don't think we should be uh, putting too much stock in Apollo. I really think he might be hurt and we might have to deal with whatever's next. But we also saw the repackaging, in a way, of Brendan Vink and Shane Thorne with MVP. And it's like, oh, what if we get to SummerSlam and we can have arenas again? And here's Edge, here's Orton, here's KO, here's AJ. And all these, this slew of dudes is just off TV. Like, I keep, my mind keeps going back there because you know, as soon as they can pull that trigger, that trigger will be pulled and these guys will be back in their traditional slots unless somebody makes a really strong impression and right now my only guess is that Zelina has, is working herself into an unfireable position can we talk America. about Zelina's outfit tonight can we talk about this uh I, I got I got I, I don't mean I'm not objectifying Kevin here, there's uh, a lady president I don't feel comfortable talking about it like this. no I, I do want <laughs> no, to let's, talk, let's about, talk this. about it we have to but you it. you've heard some people say the phrase oh it's me I'm having a real you know one of those days where you're vibing with yourself you dress up you feel really good about a new outfit it makes you feel good right you know what I mean I get a fresh I gotta I'm gonna buzz my hair I'm gonna feel better after this right all right freshen up the beard Get the product in there. Maybe I wear my denim jacket. I feel like I'm a cool, like a cool guy. Like I'm ready to roadhouse somebody, you know, on the street. Uh, but she came out and set up this opening six man tag match, and I couldn't take my eyes off these shoes. She had like 19 inch platform <laughs> heels on. All right, and I saw someone say it looked like something that Lady Gaga would wear, and it was absolutely true. And I don't mean it in a bad way. You can wear super flashy stuff in wrestling. You're on television, and it's wrestling, right? Uh, it's it's burlesque with body slams sometimes, but like, um, 
what did, what did you think of this outfit, Iridian? I need to take on it because there's a lot of mixed opinions <laughs> on it. I thought it was cool. I thought Vega added so much to making Apollo Crews look like he could actually beat Andrade. Uh, she almost sold better than Andrade did, but maybe that was just the way it was filmed. There's no shot on Andrade. Uh, but, but her look is great. Her talking is great. Uh, I got to say, she's probably uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the fastest rising female stars in WWE right now. Oh my god, yeah. that that ponytail that she's got with all the extra hair that's like down to her extra knees. hair. Would you yeah. is are you implying that some of that hair is not real hair? Mm. Yes, she definitely has extensions in her ponytail. That's what not all of hers? What? Um, <laughs> then you're gonna tell me that the matches are predetermined. <laughs> the pants. Um, I was a little shocked by the pants, but I was like, you <laughs> know, that's you know, Zelina's outfit, you know, whatever. She rocks it, but definitely her heels were like. 10 inches because she's a short girl so mm. you can definitely tell that she was barely up to maybe andrade's height at that point i didn't mind it because she probably knows how to walk in it she's you know been short all her life of course she got she's in the trained. rain too i know, you know what i mean and then they started These aren't fighting just, i got so go back anxious. and watch this if you don't know what i'm talking about go back i can't i couldn't take my eyes off of it because it's like how do you even, it's not just like the regular she was wearing stilts like they were, the, my, they were like designer stilts my anxiety was through the roof when they started fighting i'm like oh my god nobody hit her leg because she will she will be out if someone hits her leg it's over but it's a, you know there's no way she can dodge <laughs> anything at ringside she's just but, to hang onto the rope and like <laughs> but you know what she probably didn't even uh struggle that much because the heel had a lot of platform so she really only felt like she was walking in three inch heels so it, it balanced out it wasn't difficult for her i, I love the insight here yeah oh, we are getting cool. some, <laughs> some insight yeah. to this all right all right if if uh now really if, if you want us to come on rest friends and uh talk about how men uh readjust their pants so it doesn't seem oh, like they're not do. trying to make their junk stick to their thigh when it's really yeah. hot in the day how we can explain Ricochet that do for that you in those shorts now you uh, <laughs> a hard time but you know <laughs> He pulls it off. Uh, other other big points coming out of Monday at Raw. Uh, we we were advertised a triple threat. They did this on NXT, and it kind of irked me. I didn't hate it tonight, but I definitely felt it, underwhelmed. We were getting Shayna, Baz Shayna Baszler, Asuka, and Nia Jax, two, uh, three superstars that have been uh, really, really built up for this Money in the Bank match coming up on May 10th on the WWE Network for the upcoming Money in the Bank show. And it turned into Nia Jax wrecks them for 90 seconds with a ladder and throws it at him, and that's it. And we didn't even really get a match. Now, mind you, you could say that no one really took a pinfall, right? Parody booking, if you will. Uh, but it did feel like they advertised something and we didn't get it. So that was kind of my big thumbs down for the night. Though I didn't think it took away from the storyline. It did take away from the TV show this week. But at least they were all there. Unlike uh, the NXT match that you said, like none of them were there. Mm, yeah. Well, you get to this thing where I feel like somebody said on paper, Nia, Shayna, Asuka, that sounds great. And then some, somebody looked at him real quick, probably Hunter, and goes, who the F loses that? Like... None of these women can take a loss right now. What are you doing? So they just said, eh, go out there and fight. And they went out there and fought. No ring bell, no anything. It was good for what it was, but it wasn't a match. Well, I sure. can't wait till we actually see this match. Like, all of those women are dangerous. So I can't, yeah. like, that's that's pay-per-view. That's a pay-per-view match. True. There could be some sense of saying that maybe they're protecting this for pay-per-view and they're building it up. So you can't say that that isn't, you know, a more longer term, not a short term booking. So, but Apollo Crews got that tonight where they mm -hmm. you had him win one match and let's do it again. So, and that's been their MO since this coronavirus thing is to try and keep the rosters as light. You know, we didn't get a Becky Lynch tonight. You know, there was, but some we got we that 24 special. They did do the 24th. They did have like a pre film segment to kind of remind you of it. So there was that. We didn't get Triple H, even though they ran you know, clips of his top 10 moments throughout the night. Uh, so th there was that here. Uh, so different takes on it. Overall, pretty strong on it. Raw, they said it. Some, uh, ta they set up a bear match between the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders no longer doing karaoke in a car, which is a good move because it was awful a week ago. Uh, straight up promos from everyone. Pretty simple. I don't want to say run of the mill show, but nothing groundbreaking, though I didn't feel like I lost attention with the whole show. Uh, you know, we got to see Ricochet and Cedric Alexander be featured. You mentioned MVP presenting a new tag team. He's now finally managing someone. We thought he was going to manage people for a long, long time. Now he's finally doing it. Uh, overall, pretty good raw. I gave it a solid 6.5. 
You know, I, I was missing maybe one banger match, but Apollo Cruz and Andrade was the fun match of the night. That was the great story. I was uh, really enjoying it. Uh, Robert, your take. What do you give it? The one out of ten? Uh, about a six. It wasn't offensive, but it just – it was nothing special. It didn't hold me, you know, like – you know, nothing offensive – Good move on WWE. I might have to bump it up to a seven for replacing Jerry Lawler on the mic with uh, Samoa Joe. Uh, no ramen noodle moonsaults out of the mouth of Samoa Joe, but that's okay because if you want to know why he said that, he being Jerry Lawler, go to WrestleZone.com. It's because heels are supposed to sound stupid, guys. It's okay for a heel to say something way off color and slightly stereotypical. That's some very. It's a whole lot of kayfabe logic there, Robert. Some kayfabe logic for sure. Uh, people texted in here. Hermit Takar giving uh, Raw tonight a seven point five. Scott feels it deserves a uh, six out of ten. He's with me there on that. So if you're uh, watching on demand, if you're watching on YouTube, give me the comments. If you're with us on the podcast, tweet them at us at WrestleZone.com. Uh, anyone also, by the way, if you listen to the podcast version of the show, if you rate the show five stars, we're going to read your reviews on the show. So go and rate us on iTunes or any of the podcasts after on a bunch of stuff on the Russell's Zone radio podcast feed this week. I mentioned that Mike Bennett interview. We got one with the AEW champion, John Moxley. I believe that's supposed to drop sometime soon. He has a big movie coming out. So I'm looking forward to that. Robert, I am told that is going to happen. So, so yeah, I, I, no, I feel no, confident no, saying that. It's been recorded. It's been ready to go. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I jumped on and saying that a little bit too early there. Uh, and, of course, we have the Survey Says shows talking about MLW, maybe a wrestling show that you're checking out or maybe you're thinking about checking out. Uh, go check those out. Those are up in the podcast feed now. Uh, let's get a little bit more of the news of the day with WrestleZone.com. Jerry Briscoe, longtime uh, WWE executive, been in the company a long time, scouted talent. He's been a, one of the main guys that helped bring in Brock Lesnar to WWE. He has been released. We just found this out. Kind of a bummer story, right? Definitely. Um, I was looking on Twitter and a lot of people thought he died. I was like, <laughs> what? No, he got released. He's an older guy. So, I mean, I, I think maybe that's the fear when you hear about anyone that's that's up there is like, you know, that... <laughs> That's a different release. <laughs> that's a much that's that is the a, release that no one wants. Yeah, that's getting released from life. I imagine <laughs> the, the phone call with something like this. Uh, uh, Gerald, I gotta gotta let you go, pal. It's been a <laughs> it's been a wonderful thirty five years, but I uh, I gotta let you go. Who was that calling, Vince or Death? That's uh, <laughs> either one. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> already. He's like. Uh, well, uh, no, I'm a comedian. I'm used to having the, the crazy uh, off color lines. By the way, and I imagine Gerald said, Mr. McMahon. I, Mr. McMahon. I didn't even realize that you still knew you were paying me. So I'd like to thank you for the last 35 years. Thank you for the money, Mr. McMahon. Mr. McMahon. Yeah, I, I, yeah, people agree with the Mr. McMahon here. Uh, uh, some other takes here about tonight's Raw. Scott George Chicken said, I love Liv Morgan's new finisher. She had a big win, uh, her second one in a row over yes. Ruby Riot. Yeah. Ruby deserves she's very, better. She's very relatable. Mm -hmm. Ruby deserves better. I, I think like Liv is doing great, and she's going to make a lot of money real soon. Mm -hmm. But I think Ruby Riot deserves to be more than just like that workhorse that gets to put people over. You okay, know? Akira Tozawa tonight with Jinder Mahal. Like yeah, literally. he got he got he ate a hot bowl of the jabberoni today, did he? <laughs> yeah, I mean Jinder Mahal got reintroduced to WWE. We have not seen him in months. He's been cleared medically for a while. Um I, I don't see him be, I see also I see him being a guy that's gonna be in WWE for quite some time. Uh, he's very, very popular in India. They want a big Indian superstar. They got one in Jinder Mahal. Uh, he is, is seen as a big pivotal player in their expansion there. That is one of the biggest international markets they have. I know a lot of people think that's a ridiculous idea. Uh, but they played a stadium with a house show when he was champion. That's, that's, worth, staying, that's worth stating there. Uh, and international talent and the variety and diversity. And also, I, I don't think he's nearly as bad as people make him out to be. Uh, but when he did win the titles, people thought this is a little bit too soon. What do you what do you do with Jinder this time around here? What do you do to add some new edge, some new spin to it? Well, I mean, he looks a lot leaner, leaner and meaner. 
I believe the, the contractual obligation states that two members of 3MB have to be employed at a time. And when they released Heath Slater, they realized they had to call Jinder Mahal up from injury. I think as weird as it is, at some point we're going to see former 3MB members clash over the WWE title in front of nobody. So it's the encore that nobody expected to see. But now you're yeah. getting it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here, uh, immediately when uh, when he was on TV, I was looking at Twitter, and people were like, "Are you gonna do? You gonna do these two guys versus each other because they're partners? <laughs> well, you have well, you have to do it." They really made it a point to say he's a former WWE champion. You know, I don't know if Randy Orton comes back tomorrow. If they're gonna announce him as former WWE champion, <laughs> Randy Orton. Yeah, that's another big name we haven't seen in a long time. Edge too. So you gotta you gotta think there's a lot of a lot of guys who are getting the, the the ball to run with it in this term, and then you still have people complaining, still have people bitching. It's not gonna stop. Yeah, wrestling fans are always gonna bitch and complain. So what are you gonna do? Uh, overall, money in the bank. Where do where do you feel about it? Are you more into it this week than you were last week? I thought they did a lot more. Work. They did a lot more work this week on on Drew and Seth, which needed it. Uh, I think Money in the Bank it has a wild new concept of fighting your way through the top of a building and getting to the top of it. It's going to be a quote unquote cinematic match, completely pre filmed. They've already filmed both the women and the men's. Um, I'm just where I was with it last week. I think it's it can be a very unique match, and there's more expectations for it after the Boneyard match, after the Firefly Funhouse at WrestleMania. That if you're going to pre film this thing, you can go. You can go anywhere you want with it. And you're going to this new place that people have been exposed to, have wanted to see, but have never seen a match at it, but is so tied to WWE and it's the headquarters. Uh, Iridian, are those expectations reasonable to have here, to have high expectations for this match? Oh, definitely, especially because it's something that they haven't done before. We don't have an audience and it's through a whole building. So I'm really hoping we get some funny moments here. Um, Mm -hmm. My pick to win for the guy... It is probably Alistair. Um, I know Robert does not agree with that, but I, that's my pick. That's my pick. Robert, you don't agree. Iridian, our guest, you obviously have to come in here and, and act like a dog who has to you know, make his mark on a fire hydrant because, oh, no, somebody new is here. I have to make my mark. So why don't you think Alistair Black is going to be the guy to, to take this thing? I think he's the favorite in the match. I think he's the favorite First to walk all, out with that briefcase. First of all, Kevin. There is nothing wrong with the wrestling tradition of protecting one's spot, okay? And I would appreciate it if you acknowledged that I am a traditionalist in the art of professional wrestling. Second of all... Politicking to feel us over here. Go ahead. We have Aleister Black, sure, but why would you have his big crowning moment in front of nobody in a corporate setting? To me... Nobody thrives better in a corporate setting than one former Applebee's manager, King Baron Corbin. I think Baron Corbin gets it unless Dolph Ziggler gets by Otis. Then I think Dolph Ziggler might get that moment where he climbs the corporate ladder and gets the briefcase. You know, they've done that where they really... I, I don't think Money in the Bank is as predictable as some people make it out to be. Uh, I think Black is the favorite guy. He's been on a big winning streak. Uh, but you're right. This could be a way to really build up a heel that they need in this next quarter of the year coming off WrestleMania going into SummerSlam. And giving the giving it, it, the Money in the Bank is always better when they put it on a villain. It always is. Uh, and and it, it's always benefited them in terms of longer-term st- storyline booking. People want Daniel Bryan. He is one of the SmackDown superstars that qualify for it. Daniel Bryan surprisingly did not win at WrestleMania. A lot of people saw that as a sign that he is no longer a top star in the company. He's certainly not positioned as the top star on the SmackDown side of things, but he's still one of those guys that wrestling fans know, wrestling fans care about, and has been a top guy before. You know, uh, does Is he a guy that you could see winning the money in the bank? I want to say yes, but I don't feel it right now. I think you can never count Daniel Bryan out. Am I right, already? Yeah, you can't count him out. I think Daniel Bryan's great. Will he win? I don't know. Anything can happen in you know, Latin Listen, matches. I made a joke, and I'll put this out on the table. We're always going for weird money in the bank. What's going to happen? What if Apollo's out with a knee injury? What if they get up to the roof and Brock Lesnar's already there and he's already grabbed the briefcase and we're done here? Like Just like last year? Just like last year, except Brock does less work because he just has to be filmed holding a briefcase that nobody even has to see him grab. No, they'll probably All right. fly him in on a helicopter. I was going to say <laughs> that. Why did you steal my idea? 
Yeah. Someone well, is I flying it on a helicopter. Head. I'm saying this right now. Someone is flying in. Uh, they have a helicopter pad up there, don't they? They do. Someone is flying in on a helicopter. It's happening. It has to happen. There's no way they're not doing it. Um, there's no way they're not doing something with the helicopter. Other crazy things. The, Jerry Lawler brought this up, and we can say you know, Jerry Lawler maybe not in the best place with people because of some things he said recently on commentary. He brought up how they could fight in Vince McMahon's office. I need to see someone knock that giant T-Rex skeleton that hangs in Vince McMahon's office off the wall. It needs to be used as a weapon. All right. Anything is possible. All right. I want to see people fight in the warehouse. I want all this. I want all the ridiculousness things you can fit into one match. It has to happen. It has to happen here. I think it, overall, um, go ahead, Robert. What do you got a thought there? I think all is possible when you're in the wacky world of Titan Towers. I hear that Vince McMahon has a portrait of himself in his house riding a horse. I'd like to see that flown into the office just to be smashed over anybody's head. Now, the other big wrestling news of the day is the status of WWE 2K video games. Now, last Thursday on the investor call, it was officially confirmed that there would be no WWE 2K21 game, which would normally launch uh, right before Christmas time, as it has for the past few years. This year's game uh, got really roasted by a lot of different fans. It had some really great marketing with it with Becky Lynch and Roman Reigns on the cover. But fans felt it was a really underdeveloped game. Uh, a lot of fun features in it, but the game itself didn't play nearly as fluid as previous editions of the game. Uh, so it got roasted pretty bad, even though they put a bunch of time and effort and made the game look cool, but it just didn't play cool. Robert, we have a new game. It is a completely different idea, and uh. it looks like the 2K line of WWE video games is going to go over the top with an arcade style. It is called WWE 2K Battlegrounds. They're using Saber Studios. This is the same studio that developed uh, recent Playgrounds games for the NBA. Uh, tell me about this game. What did you think of the teaser that dropped this morning? So we were getting NBA, uh, we're getting WWE 2K Battlegrounds, which is exactly as you said, the WWE version of the NBA 2K Battlegrounds, which is an arcade style game. It's you know over the top, which might be needed since the simulation play of WWE 2K20 was an absolute abomination this year. And they're they were put an open letter saying, you know, we hear you. We're sorry, we're going to leave the 2K19 servers open so you can still play that game if you like simulation games. We're not coming out with another simulation game until 2021. We're going to hold you over with this. You're going to get to apparently feed people to alligators. Yes. I am. Um, all right. Cards on the table. I love wrestling video games. Probably the, the mesh of my two greatest loves. I'm not that optimistic about this i feel like this is going to be a rushed project and it's ultimately going to come down to but we gave you something and isn't that enough uh Rini, did you get to see it i i i i, I, I there's so i have some reservations about it i did i mean I, I don't i don't know it doesn't look the best it looks a little sketchy but robert being pessimistic about something i'm not surprised about that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but you're I right might... he does he does get a little pessy and pessimistic you're right yeah but um i might play it maybe maybe it maybe. looks like a rent it doesn't look maybe i'm on i'm on the verge of buy so the game well, came out it does have like there was a game they made a few years ago i want to say six or seven years ago called superstars it was just and it featured a lot of classic talent. And all the video games are going to feature a lot of big names, you know. And that's how they sell the games. Um, but this one was built uh, on the Superstars name, which was kind of an arcade game, which was already over top from the 80s. So they kind of just added a bunch of over the top, jump around, throw around. And it's like superheroes. This plays more like a Justice League, Superman, Batman, like people with superpowers more than it does a wrestling game. Uh, and they said that on air tonight, and it looks that way. You mentioned like John Cena being thrown in the mouth of an alligator by The Rock. Uh, that was something they showed here. But the graphics, to me, mm. I I didn't like the graphics. It, it it has this like big head mode, golden eye, Nintendo sixty four vibe to it. Um, they didn't look awful, but it I would change some of it. 
that's just my take here. Uh, but then I also grew up with, you know, wrestling games in the 90s and 2000s where it was like chunky block PS1. But you know, give me an eight bit, if, if they gave me like an eight bit video game that looked like something from Nintendo 64, I'd be like, oh God, it's, it's all retro. <laughs> it's so, it's so behind the times. I don't know. There's just some, and they, mind you, they could change a whole lot about it, but this game's dropping in the fall of 2020. So, Whatever they've rendered, whatever graphics they have, whatever engine they've created, it's already there. I mean, this this game, there's plenty of work that's going to be done in this game before it comes out. Um, but I don't see the graphics in this changing. Yeah, I don't see it either because it's very similar to the NBA 2K Playgrounds style. My thing with Playgrounds is I bought that game. I thought mm. it was great. I loved NBA Jam. Who doesn't? You know, but the Playgrounds felt a little soulless. And I don't want a soulless arcade wrestling game. I want fun and i want to be like four player chaos where you know it's you and three friends and you're all sitting on the couch and you're beating each other up i didn't see any of that i also was one-on-one matches so i'm holding some reservations but i'm glad that wwe 2k is aware of the problem and they're addressing the problem and i'm optimistic for the future uh, speaking of cool video game wrestling connections, Robert, we're doing it again. All right. I have a little bit of, you know what this is. Uh, I'm going to hold this up to the camera. All right. You know that one, Iridian. And do you have those even in Florida? Portillo's, probably the best fast food ever because we don't eat, we don't eat well here. We just eat the good stuff that's bad for you. Uh, we're bringing back uh, all the fast food icons in a video game fast food fracas that we call Yummy in the Bank, Shorty What You Drank. Uh, and it's coming up May 10th. It'll be another uh, six mascot superstars in the ring, scaling that one greasy ladder to get that coupon to see who will get a shot at the French fried world champion, the Grimace. All right. Uh, this is pretty stupid. It's an inside joke, mm. and we're running with it. All right. Uh, we'll have that in the afternoon. We're of running. Money in the Let bank. me get this this is, this is getting the point of the bird French fries at the bottom of the bag. This Gag we have going on here. You know what? You guys like the taste of it. I'll have Robert reconnect here with me. We always have one person get knocked out here in this here. Uh, Iridian, you, you've seen us do this ridiculous stuff. Yeah. We, we're, we're spending a lot of time on one inside <laughs> joke, but it's a ton of fun, right? We're just having a bunch of different fun here with this. Yeah, it's definitely very entertaining and something that people need to watch. Absolutely. It'll, it'll be the afternoon of Money in the Bank. Robert going to rejoin us here in just a minute, and he's going to say something. People tell me that uh, Wendy is going to win. Wendy of Wendy's. She's the favorite. She's, she's, she's the favorite here. A lot of people feeling her winning this one here. It is intergender fast food branding battle. <laughs> it's uh, Robert... intergender. It's interspecies. <laughs> I, I got cut <laughs> off by my god-awful internet connection i apologize but we are gonna do yummy in the bank this is going to be a great time it's gonna be the grimace versus the gall of the gooker you might have heard him reference on smackdown as the worst idea ever by an aging vince McMahon. life is amazing in 2020 i don't know what is happening but you know we're looking forward to yummy in the bank are we not kevin i am what did you think of that show ending segment with with triple h they built that up for two hours on smackdown i watched it we had a watch along here and I was watching it solo and I found it, it was entertaining and funny, but it definitely didn't feel like a big show closing ending, but getting to see Vince McMahon on television uh, now is a special, special thing in 2020. Uh, it, uh, do you like train wrecks, Iridian? I love train wrecks. Why I, uh, do you think I watch wrestling? I know I do too. And you know, this, this segment went from like Sean and Hunter being dorks in front of nobody to Vince McMahon just rambling. And it was so bad it's good because we're hearing Vince just go on about, hey, yeah, remember, it's your life, Bailey. Oh, that was cricket. So just like, <laughs> like, what is he talking about? This is Triple H's 25th anniversary. Uh, and then there's like this really somber moment where he just looks at him and he goes, I love you, Paul. And like it just looks weird, I love you. And then it's, uh, oh, and by the way, Good night, Padre. And they're using airtime on SmackDown for their inside family network jokes. Network television. Network yeah. television. And they're, it's their inside family jokes, and it's amazing. Uh, but you know what? I was entertained by it. You know, I, I, I thought it was fine, but I could definitely see like a casual fan being like, what is going on here? I, uh, I didn't say I wasn't entertained. I was highly entertained. <laughs> I enjoy aging Vince McMahon. It's becoming one of my favorite things. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved the fact that they took uh, Triple H's water bottle away from him before yeah. he was able to <laughs> spit all that water out. They're like, no, not not in these times, my fellow. No, 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 not not today. And that was and that, <laughs> that went viral. A lot of people, I think, that got that got shared like thousands of times. We do have some breaking news coming out on Monday at Raw. This confirmed by WWE. Apollo Cruz is out. Of the men's Money in the Bank match, uh, he uh, they whether it is legitimate or not, seems like he suffered an injury that will uh, prohibit him from being in action, even though he had a lot of momentum. He beat MVP to get into the match. He won the six-man tag match. He nearly uh, defeated Andrade to become the United States champion, and that all in the last two weeks, only to be yanked out of the ladder match. Now, obviously, this is a storyline thing here, uh, but you know, some people thought he could have some exciting moments in Money in the Bank. He could be one of those guys that doesn't win the match, but really uh, you know, has maybe a Kofi Kingston moment where he doesn't win, but he's definitely a guy you're talking about afterwards. And that, you need that in uh, a high-flying guy who's super dynamic. I mean, Apollo Crews looks like a heavyweight, but wrestles like a cruiserweight. Uh, certainly needs some personality, uh, just for me. But I, I, I don't know. This is going somewhere. Does, does he chase that United States title? I mean, I don't see how you can put him in any other match on the show if he can't be in the ladder match. I don't think he does anything. I think he's injured. I don't think we're, we're in a state of mind where we can afford to be kayfabe in injuries here. And even if we are, you know what? Screw it. I'm going all in. Brock Lesnar just shows up on top of the ladder, on top of the roof, and Brock Lesnar was the, <laughs> the briefcase because it's just, you know what? It's what we deserve. Did, mm. Like, you get up there, you're watching uh, five or six dudes beat the crap out of each other through an entire office building, and then you get to the top, and Paul Heyman's already, like, mid-promo with Brock Lesnar just dancing with the briefcase in the background. And <laughs> these are the things I want. <laughs> you know, I want to just see chaos. Give me what I want! Right? Give me, give me what up. I want. Yeah. Um, this one coming in, uh, Terrell Diggs. Terrell says, who should replace Apollo Crews? Who do you plug in there? Uh, what do you think, Erdian? I don't know. They're advertising Jeff Hardy a lot, but I don't want Jeff in another ladder match. That's like, ugh, I want him to preserve himself as long as he can now on. Um, maybe but also NXT the guy, guy. Has certainly made, he's made his name in ladder matches. Are you telling me that crazy Jeff Hardy doesn't want to do something on a ladder on Hold top on. of the building? Hold on. When you say you want him to preserve himself, I need to inform you that that man is married. I don't know what thoughts you have in your mind. He is a married man. I, I'm sorry for your loss. I don't, I don't know what you're thinking that I'm thinking, Robert. But um, when I go see Jeff Hardy, I'm like, you've put your body through a lot already, my friend. Like when I was a teenager, I thought he like, I thought he died when he jumped off of one of the scaffoldings to jump onto Randy Orton. Like I thought this guy was dead. And I'm like, you don't really need to keep doing that. You know, I'm entertained. You can just keep doing simple moves. I'm fine. <laughs> just little you know? bumps. Just, just little, little bumps. You just, just take it's. You know, that's just all come, I need. Just come out wearing those fishnets on your <laughs> arms. You know, doing your do hand the, signal. Do the dance. You know, and just yeah, good. do your dance like you're just the <laughs> assistant manager at a Hot Topic. You know what I mean? Like it's cool, dude. That's all right. I don't. I don't need him in another ladder match. Hey, right if now. Jeff that's a lot is of stress. In the match, Jeff is jumping off of the building. Oh, my God. (laughs) It's going to happen. You know what? If Jeff is in this match, he at least teases jumping off of this building. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm. But that also Uh, opens up for NXT talent, maybe. Who knows? I agree. What do you what do you think of an NXT superstar getting in there? I mean, uh, we'll talk about the big story with NXT before we sign off tonight. Is the one that is going on off screen than the one that is going on screen, uh, and so uh, we'll get into that in a few minutes here. Uh, from NXT, there's a handful of people that can be inserted in this match. They could do something good. I don't see anyone from NXT winning it. I really think that this is a, a point to build somebody up on Raw or SmackDown that either has been big before and they want to reprogram and then get them get them ready for something special heading into the summer season or to completely make a new superstar. And there's a couple guys in there they could do that with, but I think it's Aleister Black's match to win. Uh, and I, and I, anybody else they want to do something and shake it up with, uh, you now have two spots that aren't, that are now open up here. I think they will leave one of those spots uncertain. We will go into this. We will go into this match on the 10th, not knowing who the sixth man is, and we will find out who they are within the match. Now, within a cinematic match where you have a building and you're all racing to it, I'm okay with that, especially in the circumstances. It like adds a whole other element to the match. 
but that's all speculation. We'll follow it all at WrestleZone.com. Maybe we'll have a better idea kind of going into Friday SmackDown of exactly who is that last person because we know Otis and Dolph Ziggler are fighting for a spot on that match. But, hey, at this rate, people are qualifying getting yanked out of the match. What's to say something else is different? Let's get into the unfortunate story over the weekend, and then we'll close out the show with this here. Uh, I know you're both aware of it. Uh, we, we were, we've reported on it, and a lot of people have been asking on socials, uh, been asking. Uh, I got asked this during the Friday Night Watch Along, and I had to address it then with SmackDown and all these different things here. The situation with Velveteen Dream. Uh, now, he has been accused of uh, sending the very, very lewd photos revealing himself uh, to underage people. Uh, and these are fans, and then there's been Snapchats that have been leaked. Uh, that apparently, he sent his voice to these people. Uh, there's been speculation that whether or not these are legitimate. Uh, he has come out and outright denied it and said that, you know, that there was hackery involved. Uh, Robert, what is the latest on this? Because we haven't heard we haven't heard much of an official response from WWE. Velveteen Dream has been featured prominently on NXT television the past few weeks. I don't expect to see him on this week's show. Um, I do expect to see him on this week's show. I think before it's all said and done, I think we're leaning towards this is a hoax. Okay. And I don't want to comment too much because... Because there's so much we don't know. There's so much we don't know, but I can say assuredly it's looking like a hoax. Yeah, because we we got that first wave of stuff. uh, I believe that was Friday, correct? That was Friday, Friday yes. Uh, and there was plenty of people talking about this. It was mainly on Twitter. Uh, anytime you see something happen with these leaks and different things like that, and they only occur really on one social media platform, that's never a good sign in terms of their validity. Uh, so uh, that was my take. I was like, you're not seeing it anywhere else. You're only seeing these drop here. You're not seeing them go anywhere else. Uh, and there was, you know, something about how this was going to go forward here. Um, now there's, there's some friends of yours over at fightful.com that revealed some other things that kind of came out in the investigation that yeah. dream got into some situation legally at the end of 2019 involving him kind of uh, doing some damage to a car with someone involved. And it was reported. Now, none of that went to the next legal level uh, in terms of him being charged for it. We don't know why, but there was, you know, police reports done on this. So, but he wasn't charged with anything. Correct. Uh, so th- there's some revelations about that's more legitimate. We know that because there's police, police documents about it. This other stuff, there is a lot of hearsay about it. Iranian, where do you stand on this? I know you, you get to see a different uh, take on wrestling on social media. You have your you have your finger on the pulse here. What? How are you feeling about it? Because it's a weird thing to talk about, but obviously fans are talking, so we're going to talk about it too. It is. The first, uh, the first thing I saw about it was on, on Twitter, and it was just people saying that he had done these things. But then um, I saw a video where his voice is played and it does sound like his voice. Um, But there's just a lot of like, I don't know, you know? Um, So I don't even know where I, where I stand. I hope it's not true, but you know, if it, if it is like, does he stop wrestling? You know, are we looking at him differently anytime he comes out of NXT? Sure, is yeah. WWE releasing him? Like, there's so many things mm-hmm. that can happen. Well, I mean, for first things first, if this is legitimate, he's fired and probably wiped off the face of existence for sending photos to an underage. Yeah, there's if there's jail time involved, like this is not there. Legitimate. There could be, but I, I don't think it's legitimate because we have a comment from Kevin Durgan that says, so did they fire Dream like they did Enzo? Listen, they fired Enzo before we even knew what was going on. That's how legitimate that story was. The person went through the proper channels. When somebody jumps straight to Reddit and Twitter, it's not a good sign in terms of validity. And I understand that the voice clips were played, but I think if WWE felt like this is him, they would have fired him on the spot. There wouldn't have been. Any- I also think. I also think because of the 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 chatter around it, it may back. There may be a backpedaling of the presentation him on television. I don't think there's any. I don't think that would be unreasonable. Now we'll know on this week's on this week's NXT where that stands uh, and where he stands on the show. And he's been featured quite a bit. You know, he's been one of the main guys. He's they been had number the number one contender for the title. That would exactly. cause a huge shakeup. Uh, that would cause a huge shakeup in it. Now, if the, if he's removed from that position. 
it it just wouldn't surprise me, even if this is turned out to be a hoax or whatever it is. And let it be the people at WrestleZone are not saying that anyone who accused him of anything isn't legitimate. We're just saying there is simply so much we don't know. And it hasn't gone, we haven't heard it gone to the next police level. We've heard people say that it's going to, you know, but we haven't seen it go there. And we haven't seen WWE have any dis- disciplinary action just yet. So, uh, you know, when we do, we'll have it at WrestleZone.com. It's a developing story. I think that's the best way to treat these things. I think, especially when information moves so fast and we're all locked, we all want the next thing to happen. Tell me, tell me the thing I want to hear now. Uh, and we're not going to do that because it hasn't happened yet. You know, like we... We all want to hear about a vaccine being made now, and this is the thing that can uh, they, change they, the world. Different, a... different, different topic completely, Kevin. No, but I'm just saying in terms but of it's information. Related. Yes, like, in terms of information consumption, we want to hear the next part of the story now. But you just gotta calm down a bit and let things happen as they happen. So I want to talk about a story that broke over the weekend. Go My ahead. favorite story in wrestling history, perhaps a okay. woman. Saw an end of the O shirt. Oh, this is ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> at Walmart. And then was her said, name Karen? Her name was uh it should have been Karen. And she's a Karen. <laughs> she she is definitely a Karen. She might be the poster child for all future Karens. But there was an NWO shirt, not even mainline, it was a red shirt, white lettering, NWO for life. And this lady got on Facebook and said the global elites at Walmart are pushing a new world order agenda. <laughs> this it was means... all elite wrestling. They have the NWO now. They're the global elites. Good lord. Good lord. I mean, this poor woman got roasted. My favorite story of all time, just because this woman who can clearly see the WWE logo, I guess she doesn't watch anything. <laughs> it's in the picture. You have to watch anything that's that's not uh, TBN and uh, TD Jakes and Joel Osteen. So maybe she's not exactly aware of what that symbol is. Maybe she thinks it's like some upgraded Walmart logo. But she's like, oh, they want a one world government. They want a one world church. Uh, I'm scared. The, the, the Illuminati is simply too sweet. I'm scared and, for what, what she's going to do when the world tells her about Bitcoin because she might just have a heart attack on the spot. But I will tell you this. You I know who's like holding us down, Robert? You know who's holding us down? Eric Bischoff. Yeah, controversy, controversy creates cash, Kevin. He, tweet, yeah. he retweeted the story from WrestleZone on Twitter. He retweeted Twitter. the story from WrestleZone. I'm a little salty about that. Because I was <laughs> on the WrestleZone. Okay? I was Robert, on. everyone gets under your skin, dude. You, uh, we're, we're, everyone is on. Uh, Iridian's coming at you. I'm just stirring up the pot between you. Yeah. Usually, usually you're doing this to me. Usually you're the one who's like messing with me. But we're all just poking the big bear Robert tonight. You know, I, I don't mind it. But I got to tell you, I nearly, when I wrote this for Fightful, I nearly wrote the the, the lead was going to be wrong again, Karen. But I, I stopped <laughs> myself because I didn't want any of that Karen backlash. You know, they're very busy these days. They're, they're multiplying outside of buildings saying they need to be liberated, not realizing they live in America, even though they got the flag all over them. But I'm going to tell you, I, this woman is now my favorite thing to come out of quarantine. She, not all, not all people who oppose... Dude. Do, do do we see like a Karen type character in WWE or All Elite Wrestling? I thought that was what Bailey was. I thought, I thought that was Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> have you you seen, both wanted to say it. You both wanted. Have to you say seen it, yeah. Bailey's like Karen haircut? Karen, Bailey's becoming very Karen as the months go by. But I she got wanted... a Karen haircut. But Vicky Guerrero, I think, was the oh. OG karen vicky vicky would be the perfect like conspiracy theory like everyone's out to get me there's this big like like issue of everything oh if they had care if they have vicky managing people saying everyone's screwing her guy from winning a match and someone says who did it what's the nwo (laughs) it would be ridiculous i would love it kevin durgan texting in with this uh when you work at walmart you work there for life, <laughs> you know. I enjoyed that comment. I, I'm wearing this shirt because I wanted you all to know that I support Bitcoin, and I. Support- <laughs> <laughs> Robert's with him. He's been he's been against us this whole time. This whole time, he's playing against us here. Yeah, uh, a lot of people with different takes here. Um, definitely, uh, I expect 
Bischoff's going to have to mention this on the 83 Weeks podcast that he has with oh, Conrad yeah. Thompson at some point, sometime soon. Uh, and uh, people supporting you, Robert. People supporting you. Faithful Fan of the Show listens and watches every single episode. One of our number one fans. Gotta, gotta say, James Ace. No, Spunk no. Already let him, him. Let him. Okay, all right. I'll stop. I'll stop. Go, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead, ahead, Kevin. No, go no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. We, we I, I have my brand new it. microphone. <laughs> I wanted to make it work. But apparently Robert, uh, or as I now call him, the fun killer, Robert DeFelis. Uh, I want uh, – I want – Proper enunciation. Already, okay. how is he going to learn to enunciate if he doesn't practice, Robert? Well, he gets enough practice, and I can practice. coach Kevin. <laughs> All right, into show me, his R's. show me, show me how to properly say this wonderful, graceful name, Already. James Espanto Fernando Taguay. <laughs> that, that was awesome. That I, if that was on a menu, I would order it now. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, he texted and says, "It's okay, Robert. You're in the zone. Yes, when you're in the zone, uh, expect someone to come at you here with something here." Uh, and uh, people, uh, people also say I shouldn't push you into Sean Ross Sap territory. If you listen to the show, you'll know why we're not a fan of that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we'll, we're going to return with some fun tomorrow, uh, Tuesday afternoon. This is the rhythm we've been doing here with the live streams. If you're a fan of the live stream show uh, or watching them on demand or the podcast when they come out, Monday nights will be on after Raw. Tuesday afternoons will be on late afternoon. Wednesdays will be on after AEW and NXT. And Thursday, we'll do a late afternoon show. So. Thank you guys for checking it out. The best way to know exactly when we go live, so you can pop in here and kind of be on the show with us, is to uh, like our page on Facebook and also follow it. If you have this extra hoop you want to get through. Uh, also, uh, if on YouTube and you subscribe to us there, make sure you turn your notifications on. You get a gold ding, 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 and it's not an annoying thing. It's not some annoying ad. It's us. It's just your buddies at Russell Zone here on the virtual couch talking wrestling. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter at Kev Kelm. I'm on air with 101 WKQX. You can listen to us on the weekends, on your phone, on whatever. Already, in, you're busy with rest friends. What's coming up with you guys? You guys are on. You guys have the YouTube channels popping off right now, right? Yes, we have our YouTube channel. So go and subscribe to Rest Friends. We have a new podcast episode coming out this Friday, and that's going to be available on Spotify and iTunes. And if you want to know about me, know about Teddy, you can follow us at Rest Friends. On Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. We're everywhere. Literally everywhere. And Robert, who are you getting into a fight with on the internet this week? Uh, I think you. I think that this is the direction <laughs> we're going into. Uh, I, I work for Fightful when I'm not here, but I'm mostly here. I'm mostly in the zone. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's where you can find me. Over the weekend, I got to make some money. So I'm working for Fightful, doing the Fightful mm -hmm. selecting. I am selecting to work for Fightful on the internet on the weekend. And, you know, Sean Ross Sapp, great guy, great head of hair, wonderful dude. What? What was that? What? that Where are you going over there? Why are you trying did you, did to do you, that to Kevin? I saw Maria, that. Did you hear that? Did, did you hear what he was called? I said, Sean Ross Sapp is a great guy. It's great to be there. What are you talking about? No, you said no. great head of hair. Are you, you said great head of hair? That, no. That's a shot, right? You, you're not even yeah. taking a shot. You're not even looking at me when you take guys, the shot, Robert. Guys, okay, guys, guys, you're guys. slouched in your chair right guys. now, Robert. Sit I, up straight I, and I, tell it to Kevin how I, it is. I, I, you're I, really trying to tell him. I apologize. I know that I, I tend to have a bit of a speech issue. It's. I said it's great to be there. I didn't say oh. that Sean Rossap has a uh -huh. great head of hair. Okay, I'm going to rewatch re so, that later. And since, see. since you mentioned it, though, I will say Sean Rossap has an excellent head of hair. He's very follically gifted. He's a great, great guy. Tremendous guy. Top notch guy. Top, top notch guy. Great. Thank you. Uh, people asking us what time on Friday afternoon, likely in the 5 p.m. Central Central hours when we'll be live with the show. Once again, like the page and follow it because then you get the notifications. They pop up and let you know. All right, everybody, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you so much for supporting the show. If you're having a good time, uh, also help the show grow. If you have some wrestling friends, rest friends, uh, tag them in the comments of this video or simply share this with them as well. Uh, we are building to a, a very fun time. We'll have Yummy in the Bank on May 10th and coming soon, 
our very own game show, which is pretty, pretty cool. What is the game? How do you play it? It's not Triple H. We'll tell you about it. It's coming up soon. I'm working on it. It's going to be quite the fun thing to jump into in this late spring summer period here. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Robert, when we watch wrestling, though, we may fight. Though we may get into fights with people that think the Illuminati is working with uh, Attitude Era logos. Thank you. Drop the diamond on them. All right. We're talking about DDP. Uh, NWO, cool. the Illuminati, Cody, Cody all of Cody it. was really interested in some Illuminati shadiness. <laughs> Must be that Ted Turner connection. Um, <laughs> when we watch wrestling, mm-hmm. we have to analyze it because we, we have nothing better to do. Okay, we're in quarantine, so we're analyzing everything. But outside of all that, you just got to lay back and enjoy wrestling. You're right. You're right.